Vulnerable Wetlands and Stormwater Management Planning. Part 2, Stormwater and Total Maximum Daily Loads. This is the second of a six-part Vulnerable Wetlands presentation series. In this segment, we review stormwater impacts on surface water quality in vulnerable wetlands. We also describe the efforts by EPA and the state of Massachusetts to identify pollutants of concern in a watershed and to limit delivery of these pollutants to water bodies by defining maximum daily pollutant loads that streams, lakes, and ponds can accommodate and still meet the state water quality standards. Many water bodies have good water quality, but over 40% of the lakes, ponds, rivers, wetlands, and coastal waters in our nation are listed as impaired due to pollution. Historically, states sought to improve water quality by concentrating on point source discharges from industrial sites and municipal wastewater treatment facilities. Massachusetts and other states are now expanding these efforts by addressing non-point sources of pollution such as septic systems and stormwater discharges. The energy associated with rainfall runoff and snowmelt can dislodge and transport sediment and pollutants. During a heavy rainstorm, for example, water flowing across a parking lot will pick up sediment as well as oil, coolant, and other car-related contaminants coating the asphalt. The rainbow-colored sheen you might observe on water flowing off a road surface is oftentimes a pollutant such as oil or gasoline destined for the nearest surface water body. Stormwater surface runoff is an effective mechanism for delivery of human-made and natural pollutants to wetland resources. The loss of vulnerable wetlands and urban landscape intensifies and expedites the delivery of stormwater and pollutants it carries to receiving waters. As seen in this chart, roadway, landscaping, and agricultural runoff can contain nutrients, bacteria, debris, sediment, and a host of other contaminants that degrade surface water quality and impair aquatic ecosystems. The cost to deliver quality public drinking water to our homes relies to a large extent on the quality of water in our wetland and groundwater systems. This image illustrates the interconnectedness of our wetland and groundwater systems to our public water supply. The bright and light green regions in this image show the location of high yield and medium yield aquifers that are part of the MCP drinking water source areas. The zone two to a wellhead protection area, shown here in pink outline, is determined by hydrogeologic modeling and approved by MassDEP Drinking Water Program as a protected recharge area around a public water supply. Milford Pond and surrounding river systems are within the Zone 2 and as such direct sources of groundwater recharge and surface water withdrawals for public drinking. The loss of vulnerable wetlands and urban landscapes can contribute to eutrophication in water bodies, loss of potable water, and wildlife habitat. Phosphorus, for example, is a known contributor to eutrophication. It adheres to fine particles of sediment that are easily washed off roadways and hard surfaces by rainfall. These small particles, typically less than 100 microns in size, account for a significant portion of the phosphorus load in stormwater discharges. Stormwater pollution can also change the pH, ambient water temperature, and the dissolved oxygen levels in aquatic ecosystems. And stormwater increases the turbidity in downstream waters that can result in erosion of stream banks. So how do we deal with impaired waters in Massachusetts? We implement TMDLs and stormwater standards. TMDL is an acronym that stands for Total Maximum Daily Load. It is defined as the maximum amount of a pollutant that a water body can receive without impairing its ability to meet the designated beneficial uses under the Clean Water Act and the state water quality standards for protecting public health. The designated uses of water include drinking, swimming, recreation, and fishing. TMDLs are developed to address the pollutants of concern in impaired water bodies and are based on studies conducted to determine the source of the impairment. TMDLs identify the pollutants of concern in a watershed and specify how much of that pollutant can come from point sources, how much of the pollutant can come from non-point sources, and how much can come from natural sources. 
EPA requires that MassDEP periodically assess and report on whether the waters within the Commonwealth meet state water quality standards for all designated public uses, such as swimming, fishing, public water supply, etc. As of the 2012 Water Quality Assessment Reporting Year, over 2,700 miles, or 23 percent, of the total river and stream miles in Massachusetts watersheds have been assessed as seen in Chart 1. Chart 2 shows that 64 percent of the stream miles assessed were found to be either impaired or threatened. And finally, that 86 percent of the impaired rivers and streams are in need of a TMDL. MassDEP has developed a TMDL strategy that prioritizes all the listed water bodies establishes TMDLs for degraded waters, and plans for implementation of best management practices to clean up polluted water bodies. The MassDEP Watershed Planning Program produced this map on the condition of water bodies within the Commonwealth as part of the Federal Clean Water Act reporting requirements of Section 305B and 303D. Section 305B of the Clean Water Act is the Summary of Water Quality Report, and Section 303D is the List of Impaired Waters. The map shown here is entitled Mass DEP 2012 Integrated List of Waters. It provides the current status of all previously assessed waters in the Commonwealth by placing each water body into one of five categories that describe the current ability of each river or stream to attain all the designated public uses. The goal of the TMDL is to reduce the pollutant loads to receiving waters so they can meet water quality standards. TMDLs apply to existing and proposed stormwater discharges. TMDLs are implemented through the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, better known as NIPTES permits, for point source controls, and through stormwater management standards under the Wetlands Protection Act for both non-point and point source discharges. In Massachusetts, over 185 TMDLs have been approved and more are under development. What happens if a TMDL has been adopted in your watershed? If a project is proposed in a watershed with a TMDL and the project is subject to Wetlands Protection Act jurisdiction, the wetland stormwater standards require that the project be constructed using best management practices known as BMPs that are consistent with the TMDL requirements to treat the pollutant of concern. Because pollution prevention is an interest identified in the Wetlands Protection Act, Conservation Commissions and MassDEP may require the use of appropriate PMPs when reviewing projects under the Act. The TMDL may also contain information on appropriate treatment BMPs. See the MassDEP website for additional information on the Massachusetts TMDL program and the Massachusetts Stormwater Handbook for information on treatment BMPs. For additional information regarding vulnerable wetlands and using GIS maps for stormwater management planning, please contact Nancy Lynn or Alice Smith of the MassDEP Wetlands Program. Our email addresses are nancy.lynn at state.ma.us or alice.smith at state.ma.us. References and links for vulnerable wetlands presentations can be found on the Mass DEP websites under Education and Outreach. Vulnerable Wetlands and Stormwater Management Planning Presentation is funded in part by a Federal Clean Water Act Wetland Program Development Grant from the United States Environmental Protection Agency, Region 1.